So it's like, you know, Mona, you making money, but, and I understand that, you know, these motherfuckers, they want to be on TV, you know, and Stevie, I don't know, it seems like he's trying to get his life together, he's trying to get, you know, get his, you know, thing together with his children and all that, that's commendable, it's like it's showing that he's growing up, even though the nigga's like 50, but it's like he's growing up and starting to, because it's not the age of the stage, let's be clear about that, ladies, don't think just because a man is 52 years old that he's very mature, that doesn't mean that. That does not mean that. You could meet a man that's in his 20s that's very mature. You could meet a man in his damn, he damn near 60 years old and he's still out here doing dumb ass shit. So that don't have nothing to do with age. Let me just go on and say that right now. Even when it comes to women, just because you meet a young lady that she's 24 years old, that don't necessarily mean that she's very naive and all that kind of stuff, okay? But, however, as far as life experiences go, she's just not there yet. And truly, I feel as though women don't truly reach um, her level of, 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 of um, let's see, what do I want to say? What's the word I want to say? When a woman reaches the age of 28, that's when she begins to truly know who the hell she's going to become. That's when she start having, um, uh, uh, What's the word I'm trying to gather? My head is all over the place. Excuse me. That is when she has... By 28, you have truly have known what hurt is. Okay? You have been through a few relationships um, that probably did not work out. By that time, some of us have been married. Um, by that time, some of us have had children. And so you begin to see life through a different set of eyes once you turn 28. Up until 28, they're somewhat like babies, really. They really don't have much life experiences or nothing. Been spending a lot of time in school, dating casually, finding out about their bodies, trying to figure out how shit really works. So, you know, a lot of times when I look at in the 20-year-old brackets, they like babies to me. You guys are like little nuggets like babies to me in your 20s because it's like it's, it's an innocence that go with it that people allow you to make mistakes in your 20s. People really don't be tripping on you when you're in your 20s and making mistakes. But once you get after 28 and you're doing dumb shit, motherfuckers be like, now you got them, you know you know better. You know? And that's why I'm looking at these ladies on this show and it's like, okay, but they're paying them. So, and they're governed by the poetic license. So, you don't know if they're actually sleeping with these motherfuckers or not. It could be just, you know what I'm saying, part of the script. You know what I mean? Just because they going in the room don't necessarily mean they fucking them. It don't mean that. You know, they you could say anything on TV and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's facts. You know, TV is a lot of fiction. So... You know, with that said, I guess I need to really give Carly a break and just be like, you know, she's a businesswoman. She's taking care of her daughter. You know, you know her daughter's grown. But, you know, she's, she's handling her business and she's growing up and she's making her money and this is how she's making it and respect that. I respect that, Carly. I truly do. I really respect that. I'm just looking at the fact that the way the editing process and the way that they are having you play out this role on TV and as a woman of a particular age, I just see that it doesn't look nice. So even if you're just casually um, dating these men or even if um, you're not really having sex with them, you're just kissing them on camera or whatever, it still doesn't look right. It just, uh, uh, not not look right. It just doesn't look nice. Is that fair to say? It just doesn't look nice, okay? It just kind of look kind of mm, very fluid, kind of um, older Rihanna or... I, I know that probably probably sound right either, but, you know, Rihanna just seemed like she's just out there doing her thing. Though, it seems like now her shit is a little bit quiet and she low-key with it, which I like the way she rolled. She's single, she ain't got no babies, hell, she got a gang of money, what the fuck is she supposed to be doing? I ain't mad at that. But when you start having children, though, Carly Red, Mimi, and the rest of them motherfuckers, man, you just can't be out there doing all, doing it all like that. It don't look right because people are looking at the fact that, okay, you have a daughter, though, and a lot of these chicks have daughters is what be, you know, be looking crazy. It's the fact that they got daughters and they out here tripping out. They out here with daughters and they out here sleeping with all these different cats and shit. It just don't, I'm like, wow. So, Mona, you know, in, in my opinion... You know, start dialing this one down or start trying to get it a little bit more classier of a show. 
but classy don't make money. Okay, I understand that. Motherfuckers want to see the, the, the toe-out motherfuckers, the raggediest motherfuckers you can find, the motherfuckers that's doing the mostest. That's where you make money at on TV. If you just clean cut and this and this and this on some Tia Tamara type old shit, some old that, you ain't really making too much money because that motherfuckers ain't really flocking to you like that. But when you got a storyline and you acting a fool and you cutting the fuck up, motherfuckers want to see cut up. So it's like, so I see... Season after season after season. Keep putting these motherfuckers on here. You know, but it's starting to get a little stale now. And now the motherfuckers that you bringing in, these motherfuckers, anime, I don't know what that is. I don't know what the purpose of that was. I would have felt, if I was her, I would have felt low-key disrespected that you bring me in to work as a nail tech already. You know what I'm saying? But that's probably what she do too. I don't know. I don't watch the show that frequently. So I don't know. The ins and outs of these motherfuckers. Because I just happened to see this shit here last night and seen a couple of the motherfucking episodes. And I was like, wow. Is this what's going on on Love and Hip Hop? I just, okay. Make y'all motherfucking money. That's all I can say. Make y'all motherfucking money. But it was good to see um, uh, Jocelyn, you know, come into motherhood. And, you know, that was some real emotions and real feelings and real things to me. That's where the show got real at. And I really, really liked the way that piece was put together. You know, I like the fact that they brought her, her family in and her mama. I'd never seen her mama and stuff before. Maybe they'd been on the show before, but I, I don't frequent the show. But her family and all that stuff, it was good to see that. It was good to see they lived in regular houses and had regular shit going on. It was good to see... <clears throat> Jocelyn putting it out there that, you know, my mama didn't have and we was going through this and this and this. That's one thing I do like about some of the storylines on some of these reality shows is a lot of them was letting it be known that, look, I, you know, nigga, I'm a new money motherfucker. I ain't been having this shit. I'm just trying to figure it all out. I'm having fun with it, you know, and pretty much that's how Jocelyn was getting down with it. Now, she's sexually fluid. I ain't really mad at that. If that's how she roll, whatever. I bet that motherfucker's cold-blooded. Because when she whipped that motherfucker's tongue out and it curled up, bitch, my shit quit. But I was like, oh, my God. For real, Jocelyn? You know what I'm saying? And Nikki, I mean, you know, hey, I ain't mad at him. I mean, if that's how they rolling and that's how they, you know, moving and shaking or whatever. And, and they ain't got no problem with it being out there like that. That that's how they moving and shaking. Hey, it's whatever. Nikki ain't got no baby, so it's not like she, you know what I'm saying, out of line or in violation or out of compliance. So, it's like, shit, hey, y'all gonna pay me to say this shit? Y'all gonna pay me to do this motherfucking shit right here? Then, hey, keep the motherfucking party rolling. And it could be the complete opposite of who they really are at home. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta keep in mind, it's a motherfucking camera rolling. And a lot of times on these shows and in the background, it's set up for these motherfuckers to act a fool. Now, um... I do give it to, what's her name? The one, um, Jocelyn Potner that came from Miami. Beautiful big teeth in her mouth, too. She got them big-ass dominoes like scrapping the rest of the motherfucker. I ain't mad at her ass either. I said, you domino, motherfucker. I mean, shit, she came in that motherfucker for the video shoot with her motherfucking dress and shit on. She was like, bitch, what's happening? No. She, I paid, look, I, look, this is what I spent mine on. Fuck what you talking about. And it done got me on this motherfucking show again, bitch. Uh, right here, though. So I ain't really mad at her either. Because it's like she's a business motherfucker. It's like, shit, y'all motherfuckers gonna pay me? Okay, no problem. But you, I'm gonna tell y'all what it does show. It does show not only the resilience in black women, because black women will go out and make a dollar out of 15 motherfucking cents, especially when it comes down to taking care of our motherfucking kids, you know? And, and some will swallow their motherfucking pride, don't give a fuck what they look like when it comes down to making some money and bringing in some coin for the house. So I am mad at them for making their money for their children and for their households and stuff. But what I don't understand is why you making this motherfucking money, nigga, you need to be make, securing yourself some shit that where his motherfucker can't never tell you to get out. You know, y'all don't understand. And y'all that's watching this shit right here, I'm telling you, fuck all of that. It, that's some bullshit for a man to tell you to get out. Bitch, get the fuck out. What? Oh, my God. And and for years, that's all Jocelyn used to talk about is how Stevie used to tell her to get out. And he gonna put her out, out on the streets and all this kinds of stuff. 
man. And Jocelyn seems like she's pretty smart. You know what I'm saying? I really hope she got her own home that by now she'll be paid for. As many times as you done slap bitches up and then put it out the head that you eating so much motherfucking pussy by the pound. Motherfucking your house and shit's so damn sure supposed to be paid for. Ain't no way in the world. Fuck trying to get these mansions. I don't understand. Everybody ain't got Beyonce coin. Everybody don't have a motherfucking Jay-Z. Okay, so then therefore, nigga, you ain't got them kind of budgets to be out there buying mansions that you got to keep up. Mansions is an upkeep that you have to have a residual income. I can't say it enough. Yeah, it might look good to say, well, my house costs 650000 I got a 1.5. Oh, man, I got such and such acreage, and my shit right here is 10,000 square feet. Oh, I got 10,000 square feet just worth of outside and around the yard. I mean, whatever your get down is. Whatever it is, as long as you can afford it, then nigga, that's what you should have. But however, though, the bigger it is, the more of the upkeep, the more of the residual income you need to have, okay? Not, not to mention the impound account, okay? That's another thing that we need to discuss in some way, shape, or form and somewhere down the line, but goddamn it, right now is the right time. An impound account, ladies, is an account that just draws your bills from. Be it that your, your, your insurances, your taxes, if you're a homeowner, you pay, you pay taxes twice a year, or it comes out of your, your uh, PITI, which is your principal interest taxes and insurance. That is the impound account through your mortgage company that pays all of that, okay? But, um, and like me being a freelancer, um, not only on this platform, but also in my personal life, then therefore I have to have things to where I could just draw from that just takes care of the business, the background business of the home. You know what I'm saying? Then therefore, this is some money that you just don't touch. This is money that goes for the necessities of the home. The taxes, the insurance, the mortgage, the this, the that, the that, the that, the that. You know what I'm saying? So, my hope is that a lot of these women on these shows, and I'm going to close this out and keep it cute. But if you are ever able to get picked up on any of these shows, if you are ever able to run into a cash flow or whirlwind of money, lottery earnings, whatever, um, inheritance, or whatever you end up getting, and you get a certain amount of cash flow, Ladies, you need to make sure you solidify a place for you and your children to lay your heads and you ain't ever got to worry about a motherfucker telling you that they want you out of there, get out, when you gonna go, you need to find you another place to stay, this and this and this, because men will do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They will do it and turn right back around and ask for some pussy after that, and after them motherfuckers gonna come, they might say they sorry, they might not. You know what I'm saying? The decision still stands because when that motherfucker first said it, oh, he meant what he said when he said it. So then therefore, regardless of how it's cleaned up, nigga, you still said it. So solidify your lives, ladies. And especially you guys on these goddamn shows. Solidify your lives so then therefore you and your children, excuse me, don't ever have to worry about a place to stay that is very, very vital. Okay, very, very vital. These children need to see that mama is making a way out of no way. Mama, excuse me, is taking care of us in spite of this. Mama is our backbone. Mama is, you know, my, my, the nucleus. You know what I'm saying? My confidant, my best of friend. You know, this is my trust. This is where I can go and I can get the truth from. Just like I tell my children, if you can't come get the truth from me, it ain't out there, goddamn. It ain't out there because that is what the fuck I do owe you. And after you can't get it from me, I'm also need that you also converse with the Bible. Go research that. You know what I'm saying? Look through the Bible and see if you can find the answer to what you need because it's in there. It's just a whole lot of stuff to read, but it's in there though. That's why you get you a study Bible because a study Bible is going to give you where chapters at with different things you can look up and stuff like that because you're studying. So I also, it was just put on my head to also say that as well. But, uh, yeah, so that is the message of today that I did watch Love and Hip Hop. I wasn't really moved by, um, the content, um, but what eased it over for me was the fact that they're working, and this is a job, this is TV, this is fiction, and what can I say, you know what I mean? 
But on the interim note, it looked real crazy when you have daughters and sons. So let's not downplay that either. Because men and women, you know, and men seem to think, you know, what they do, you know what I'm saying, they can do whatever the fuck they can do and ain't nobody really watching them. Everybody watching the mama. No, motherfucker. Your kids is watching your ass too. Okay? So it's not just on the mama on her behavior. Let's just be crystal clear. So when you're out and you're sleeping with numerous women, you bring a lot of women around your children, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and they mama was attached to you, nigga don't look good because now your kids is looking at you like, damn, did you do this to my mama when you was with my mama? You cheated on my mama this way, the way you cheating on these women? Niggas, think about that for a minute, brothers. Really, on real shit. Stevie and the rest of y'all motherfuckers, really. I mean, because y'all motherfuckers don't do nothing. Y'all don't change your stripes, you change where you feed. You simply just pick up with another motherfucking family, another woman, and, you know, whatever, and keep on with the business of living. But have you ever just sat down just for a minute, Stevie, and just said, you know what, I wonder what my kids really think about me. You know what I'm saying? I wonder what my sons really think about me. Well, I did see on the show that your son, he had a few choice words for your ass. And and I think at a, at a pivotal point in every young, young man's life, he need to let his daddy know how he really felt about him and what he brought to the table to his mama. I think boys sh should. And men, you need to swallow your motherfucking pride and whatever this, your son say to you or your daughter, accept that because that is their truth. That is their belief and that is the way they saw things. That is their vision. That's their truth. Accept that. You know, so the moral of the story is, yes, go out here and make your money on these reality shows. Hey, you know, I, I, who, wh what, what can I say? I've done it too. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I've ghost, I've ghost uh, written on a lot of these different things. And so I know how the shit go down. So I know it's just merely a paycheck for a lot of these motherfuckers. But however, though, if you're going to be out here and you on some Pinocchio shit and you getting, you know what I'm saying, on some Geppetto shit getting de dealt with like that, then ain't nothing that your ass should not have. Hell no. Nah. These motherfuckers, that's disposable income. So yeah, them chicks supposed to look how they looking like. Get some new teeth, get that ass put on like how you want it, get those titties jacked up, hiked up however way you want them, get them tummy tucks, all that old type of shit. Yeah, you supposed to get that. You supposed to get that as well as get you a home to lay your motherfucking head when your life is low and all this shit run out. But yet and still, look, check this out. My money ran out, but guess what? I ain't, nigga, I ain't out there trying to figure out where the fuck I'm going to go by the third. I ain't worried about no pay or quit notices around the seventh. I ain't tripping about coming up in my motherfucking driveway and a motherfucking red notice in the window or tacked onto my motherfucking garage or whatever. I ain't tripping on that shit. And that's what you need to be on. If y'all motherfuckers asses is going to make some money on these goddamn shows and have these motherfuckers got goddamn and have y'all motherfuckers looking crazy, then goddamn it, get your ass some shit in some shit that you can actually afford, that you can keep long term. Fuck all these Bentleys and Rolls Royces and shit. That shit is cool. I ain't mad at none of that shit, nor am I a hater. But the upkeep on them motherfuckers, the taxes and shit on them motherfuckers, I mean the tags, excuse me, the registration and shit on them motherfuckers, Yes, 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 yes. It ain't no motherfucking game. Let, let's know the motherfucking uh, smart key. God damn it, my motherfucking smart key for my car is like $600. Just, just, and I can't go no anywhere and just go get a Jaguar uh, motherfucking this right here. No, I got to go through Jaguar to get that motherfucker. And you talking about like $600. Okay, so I can't even imagine what them motherfuckers is paying on Bentleys and shit. Hell, for me to just get a motherfucking oil change on my shit is $300. Full synthetic, gotta have this, this, this. What was the name of that motherfucking filter the motherfucker said I had to have? It was started with a P. Can't think of it right now. But yeah, it, the upkeep on on those type of things is up there. And I, I, you know, I, I have a luxury car, but it's not a, but it's not to no Bentley and Rolls Royce and all. It's not on that level. But you know, I'm I'm rolling right with the Range Rover motherfuckers. And, and the motherfucker, I'm, I'm rolling with the bins and them motherfuckers, I'm rolling right with them. So the upkeep on them motherfucking cars, baby, you, that car better be paid for. Fuck paying, because why the fuck are you paying for a note? Okay, that don't mean you own the car, that mean you own the note. Okay, just to say, okay, well shit, I'm rolling around and being, nigga, I got me one down there, I got me a Bentley Coop. Okay, yeah, but I'm paying $1,500 a month for this motherfucker. 
what? Nigga, that's crazy to me. When your motherfucking ass, man, I'm telling y'all on these goddamn shows because the, at the end of the day, Mona Scott, Shawnee, all these motherfuckers, they're in their mansions and they getting told what's going on on the set of these motherfucking shows. And I'm not talking about you guys and nothing like that because y'all business women, y'all making money. You know what I'm saying? There's a market for it. Somebody got to do it, so why not y'all? I ain't mad at that. But I'm, I'm talking to the young ladies, your employees at this point in time. There is no way, shape, or form y'all motherfuckers are supposed to be out here buying shit that your motherfucking ass can't even afford. You driving around cars and shit that ain't y'all. Y'all motherfucking man, get, hey, get you the Range Rover. Get you one that's not the, not the 2017, goddamn it. It's a 15, goddamn it, but that motherfucker's mine, though. I ain't got no note. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. Don't be down there buying these mansions. Fuck all that. Everybody can't do that. I like the way Sheree did her shit. Now, the outcome... It ain't none of my business on who the name is on the title, title or what. It ain't. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. But she started off as putting her money into what was hers. How could a person be mad at that? You supposed to get your motherfucking ass in a place and in predicament to where you don't have to ever worry about laying your motherfucking head. And if you are in a cash flow situation, the way as you're making money on these reality shows, you're getting paid for pay from pay promotions or whatever. Ain't no way, shape, or form your motherfucking ass is supposed to have no car notes, no high-ass motherfucking mortgages. Nigga, you supposed to chunk that shit off. Chunk it the fuck off. And a lot of these people are, are coming in making about $200,000 a year. Not coming in. That's probably about the second season. Second season, you're looking 20, I mean 250000 that's like the second season, second, third season year. And then the subsequent seasons, it goes up, 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 and up. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Candy, I mean, hey, I ain't mad at Candy. Candy is making her motherfucking money. Earth sign, that motherfucker's like, look, check this out. This shit is paying for some shit. These shows is paying for some shit. I had to spin off the motherfuckers paid for that wedding. You know, treat your shit as a business. If these motherfuckers is going to be running you like on some Geppetto shit, nigga, you ain't supposed to be without. Why in the fuck are you making notes? Why in the fuck are you making payments? No, you need to be chunking this shit off, Jocelyn. You need to be junk, chunking this shit off, Mimi. Every motherfucking season, it's like these motherfuckers is moving again. And I'm like, damn, who the fuck is y'all friends? Who is y'all talking to? Because every season you moving, I don't, I don't even understand that shit. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm gone. Video day and bait. Today is video number two. Today is May 2nd. It is now 10.35 in the a.m. I'm going to go fry me up some bacon. And uh, then I'm going to, uh, I got to go to the market. I want to get me a piece of fish probably. Um, so I got some things going on, but, um, uh, I love you guys. I love you guys for watching. You guys have an awesome day. Bye.